Good afternoon, Malacanang Press Corps, and welcome to our press briefing today, March 21st. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. presided the sectoral meeting this morning. Pinagusapan ang status ng Executive Order 138 o ang full devolution of certain functions of the national government to local governments creation of a committee on devolution and for other purposes. The roadmap extending the transition to full devolution from national government to local government units was discussed during this meeting. And to give us more details on this, kasama natin ngayon, si Department of Budget and Management Secretary Amena Pangandaman. Good afternoon, Secretary Pangandaman. Good afternoon, Ms. Daphne, and good afternoon to everyone. Let me join us. Uh, okay, so we had a meeting this morning with the President. Uh, I'm sure you all know about the full devolution as a result of the uh, Supreme Court decision, the, the Garcia Mandanas um, Supreme Court decision case, which um, with that, in 2019, the previous administration prepared an executive order, it's Executive Order 138, which says that uh, we have a uh, transition period until 2024, to fully, um, to fully, uh, before we fully uh, implement the devolution of projects and programs to the local government units, uh, when uh, when the PDBM administration took office, uh, meron pong mga issues na naparating po sa ate ng ating mga kaibigan sa LGUs na I think uh, parami po sa kanila ang hindi pa po prepared para sa tinatawag nating full devolution. So with that, meron po tayong tinatawag na in, in EO 138, meron pong committee, uh, committee on Development, which the members are, it's chaired by DBM. Ang members po dyan ay DOF, we have DILG, and we have MEDA, and we usually consult with our League of Municipalities, yung mga uh, groups natin with the governors and city mayors and uh, our barangays. So, um, Nung sinabi po sa atin ng ating mga LGUs na hindi pa po nila kaya, even given that we're giving them enough funding as a result of the Madanas case nga po, hindi po nila kaya implement yung mga ibang projects po na medyo yung tinatawag po natin mga big ticket and high impact projects po. So what we did po is uh, the president asked us to study this and maybe make an amendment po sa ating EO 138. So kanina po, napag-usapan po namin yan together with, um, we have the League of Municipalities there, and we have si Governor uh, Dax was also there present. And we decided po, and then the President po gave an instruction to further study the responsibilities, projects, and programs na kaya po gawin ng mga LGUs at ang iiwan po natin sa national government. Kasi po, dahil po doon sa Mandanas case po, lahat po ng mga programa as provided for under our local government code, eh dapat po ipaubaya na po natin sa local government units. So, with our meeting this morning, uh, we were tasked again uh, by the President to sit and study the projects and programs po naiiwan natin sa national government kasi national government lang po ang may kayang gawin itong mga proyekto na to at kung ano po ang mga proyekto naman na i-devolve natin sa ating mga local government local government units po yun po okay thank you secretary are there any questions from the floor maris umali gma7 Secretary, uh, good afternoon and the latest happy birthday, Daphne. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, now, uh, may we just know what exactly were the reasons of the LGUs why they cannot implement fully the programs that are supposed to be implemented by them? Um, as you know, po, iba iba po ang level ng capacity ng ating mga local government units. Of course, yung mga nasa cities po, medyo advanced and developed na rin po yan. And then, because they have enough funding, pero na rin po silang enough manpower to implement the projects. But there are LGUs po that we know that are really lagging po. Hindi po nila kayang implement yung mga project kasi kulang po ang kanilang technical 
uh, expertise and capacity to implement those projects. For example po, uh, nakalagay po sa ating local government code, eh, pati po yung kunyari, a national irrigation system. I think a small water impounding system can be implemented by, by an LGU, but I don't think they can implement a big irrigation system project. Plus the fact po na ang irrigation project is usually uh, transverse um, uh, among different areas po. No? So may mga ganun po, may mga proyekto po na sobrang laki na talagang at saka kailangan po ng technical capacity and expertise po ng mga tao sa LGUs to prepare and plan po properly and efficiently mga projects. Uh, so you mentioned a while ago that mm -hmm. since uh, the local government units will not be able to implement these programs just yet, so it's going to be the national government who normally uh, implements these projects. Uh, they'll be the ones to continue these projects. But um, considering that they are expecting the LGUs, that the, the activities or the programs and the projects will be devolved to the uh, <laughs> LGUs already, and they are expecting that uh, the, the LGUs will be focusing on these projects already. Will this affect, will this have an impact on the national government's uh, implementation of these programs or not, not, not uh, at all? Wala naman po. What's important is um, yung EO 138 natin, binigyan po tayo ng enough time to transition until 2024 po to help these lagging and small LGUs uh, to cope and para po matuto sila uh, may budget po ang, nas ang different departments po for 2022 and eh, for 2023 to help them, to capacitate them. May budget po ang DALD to work on uh, seminars and workshops to help them. Meron din po capacity building ang Department of Finance on how to utilize their budgets. Ang DBM po on procurement processes para po uh, ma-procure nila na maaga at ma-implement po na maaga yung kanilang mga proyekto. And NEDA din po, nandiyan din po ang NEDA to help them uh, to help them yung pag-identify mo ng projects eh, it's in adherence with the Philippine Development Plan. May we know, Secretary, how many LGUs uh, are not capable to implement these uh, projects just yet? And in other words po ba, parang wala rin namang magiging problema kasi for these LGUs which will not be able to implement those projects uh, as, as of uh, just yet, then it will just be status quo. Tama, tama po ba? Yes. But there are also, you have to also think that there are also LGUs, especially those who are, those who are in the higher income status, yung mga cities, and ano, nakayog naman po nila mag-implement. Uh, mag Ang tututukan po sana natin dito ay yung mga 4th, 5th class municipalities. There are roughly 450, 450 of them. Uh, that's why in our EO 138 that was signed previously, meron po dyang, uh, sa section 8 po ng EO, meron po dyang tinatawag na growth equity fund. Yung growth equity fund po is uh, pondo na ibibigay natin sa kanila on top po to sa lahat ng uh, capacity building that the national government is providing. Yung pondo po yun para po matulungan sila kung paano po gumawa ng proyekto, kung paano magplano, tsaka mabigyan sila ng additional projects po para maka at least they can cope with, the, with those that are already advanced and developed. Sorry, one last. Um, how exactly will the ruling, just enlighten us, how exactly will the ruling, uh, the Mandanas ruling, affect the fiscal situation of the national government? Um, Basically po, I have the numbers here. So the LGUs will will receive an increase of 185 billion pesos. That's in 20, uh, 22 as a result of all taxes in the determination of just share of LGUs with a total NPA shares amounting to 959.04. Meaning 185 billion po ang matatanggal sa national government po at ibibigay po natin sa LGUs. I think as of now naman, uh, wala naman because we expect that the, the, the UF, UAF has been uh, incurring a lot of uh, revenues right now. So, yeah, hindi, na, hindi naman po ma-affect. Thank you. Next question from Eden Santos of Net25. Good afternoon po, Secretary. Uh, before po you mentioned that more than 960 billion pesos uh, budget for LGUs this year, 2023, uh, will remain po ba na ibibigay yan sa ating LGUs yes. under the ERA or MTA na ngayon? Opo, kailangan po kasi ito po ay automatically appropriated. 
Uh, with this budget po ba, kakayanin na ng ating LGUs na makapag, uh, makapagpagawa ng mga proyekto na masasabi natin hindi na po kailangan ng uh, national government assistance? And ano, ano po ba, aside dun sa nabanggit ninyo, small water impounding na kaya po nilang uh, ipagawa para sa kanilang uh, mga lugar na hindi na po kailangan gasusan pa ng national government? Um, kaya nga po yung, uh, yung meeting po kanina, in consultation with our um, groups, with the LMPs, with the governors, uh, tinignan po natin kung kakayanin po nila. You know, ang sabi po sa, sa atin ng local uh, ng LMPs, it's not only about the money. Of course, they are happy that they have uh, additional money now. But sila din po, iniisip din po nila, how will they use the money properly utilize it and implement it. Siyempre, pag ma ma may programa po tayo, tas makita po ng mga kababayan natin na nangyayari po yung mga pro programa at saka yung mga proyekto, it will be, mas masaya po sila na ganun yung mangyayari din po ba? So, I think uh, from their end, they're, they also welcome po yung meeting kanina, yung result ng meeting kanina, that we will still again uh, sit down and identify specifically po Ano ang mga proyekto na kaya ng national government at saka ng local government units? Ano ang kaya ng provinces? Ano yung pwede sa provinces? Ano yung pwede sa municipality? Ano yung pwede sa cities? At ano ang pwede sa mga barangays? Kabilang po ba, palap lang, kabilang po ba dyan yung mga uh, barangay health center, bar barangay hall, mga ganun po? Yung mga maliliit pong ganyan, if, if we look at our local government code, talaga pong sa, sa kanila na yan eh, di ba? Meron po silang mga local funds na talagang ginagamit nila sa mga ganyang klaseng uh, programa po. Yung mga ganyan po, mga kaya na po nila yan, talagang hindi lang po talaga nila kaya. Minsan po may mga may example po kanina, isang barangay po, even a, a short barangay road, hindi nila kaya. So talagang dito po kailangan mag-come in ang gobyerno para po matulungan sila. Thank you, Eden. Next we have Alvin Balthasar, PBS. Secretary, maganda, maganda ka po po. Uh, Secretary, uh, kakayagin po ba na ma-implement ito ng 2024? Um, ito po ang aming, uh, ito po ang instruction sa atin ng gobyerno, ay ng ating Presidente po. Pag-aralan po natin, puupuan po namin si Secretary R.C. Balisakan po ng NEDA ang mag head po nung study. Uh, tapos po, i-convene po natin ang COMDEV and then we will uh, report this to the President and all the leagues kung kaya na po ba nila by 2024 or kailangan po ba ito i-extend. So, pwede pa lang uh, uh, we, we go beyond 2024 kasi ang salary hindi talaga Possibly over. din po, kung hindi po talaga kaya. Okay. Secretary, follow up lang po. Doon sa mga 4th class at 5th class municipalities, uh, paano sila makaka-cope up? Kasi di ba parang mas kailangan nila ng dagdag na budget para makasabay doon sa ano sa magiging transition. Kasama po doon sa EO, yung sinatawag po natin nga po na kanina sinabi ko, yung Growth Equity Fund. So for last year po, we provided uh, them 1.2 billion. Uh, divided po yan according to their um, population. May, may, meron pong formula tayong ginagamit dyan. And then this year po, for 2023 budget, meron din po silang 1 billion. And then, yung capacity building din po na sinasabi ko kanina with DILG, DOF, NEDA, and DBM, and DAP. Tuloy-tuloy po ito. Magsisimula na po ito. I think ang DILG nagsimula na. And then, uh, hanggang 2024 po, hopefully, by then, we will be able na po to check kung kaya na po nila. Thank you. Uh, Ace Romero, Philippine Star. Uh, so, Secretary, so realistically, uh, when do, when we expect the completion of that particular study on the devolution, at saka kung kailangan i-revise yung EO ng Duterte admin, when realistically can we come up with that? Uh, before coming here, I was talking to Secretary R.C. Balisakan and Secretary Ben Jotno. In fact, there are a lot of um, studies already done by different um, academic institutions like the ADS and even our development partners. Maybe we can just uh, look at them again. And then, uh, mabilis lang po to, siguro in just two months, baka meron na po kaming study and we are able to show this to the President already. And if, uh, makapag-present na rin po tayo kung kailangan po talaga natin i-amend yung EO-138. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. Jessica Ramirez, Philippine Star. 
is it possible, Secretary, that it will not be a one-size-fits-all? Kasi di ba, yung iba, kaya yung, so kung sasabihin mo, i-devolve natin tong function na to, but you know, may mga layers yung some projects kaya nung iba, sa, sa projects hindi. Pwede kayang ganun po na hindi one-size-fits-all one yung mga yan? Yes po, kasama po yan sa napag-usapan kanina, parang hindi, or we don't have, parang hindi po pwede ang isang standard formula for all the LGUs. Kasi iba-iba po ang capacity, iba-iba ang ex expertise, iba-iba ang needs ng bawat um, LGU. So, yun po. Kasama po yun sa magiging parang siguro, we're talking about kung paano, how are we going to present it? Maybe um, in matrix or parang ganun po. Thank you. Salamat po. Joyce Balancho, DZMM. Ma'am, just to compare, you mentioned kanina 450 LGUs sa uh, fourth and or fifth municipalities ang um, hindi po kaya. How many LGUs naman po ang kaya naman? And just to follow up, um, how do we strike a balance? Just to follow up din sa question is, like, kung i-insist po na LGU that they can implement big ticket projects, hindi ba talaga sila pwede makapagsimula? Pwede po, kasi in fact, yung funding naman po ng NPA nila, it's already provided. It's already provided. And sa local government ko din po, naka-provide na rin po doon lahat ng mga na-devolve nating function. So it doesn't prevent them as long as they can they can do it. But we really have to take consideration po yung talagang laging po, yung mga underdeveloped. Kasi may iwan po sila. Yun lang po yung magiging, uh, I think, uh, a major issue. May iwan po sila. Number lang, ma'am, kung meron kayo number of LGUs. Ano ba ang municipalities natin? 1,000. <laughs> I think most of the there are provinces who can do it and siguro there are cities na kaya din naman po uh, may mga munisipyo din po na very um, very aggressive na kaya din po nila gawin. I think we can provide you with a number in a little while. We'll Is the there, uh, we have room for one more question. Anybody? Jonah Yu, Inquirer Radio. Ma'am, what are the safeguards that the government or the national government will implement to ensure na hindi siya mauuwi sa corruption kapag ka LGUs na bumawa? I think there, there are enough safeguards that, that we have we have now. First, yung sa GPRA mo, hindi ka basta-basta pwedeng makapag-procure ng mga produkto, services, kung hindi ka, kung hindi yan dumaan sa competitive, competitive bidding. Pangalawa, lahat po ng ating LGUs din po, eh, dumada. May COA din po. May COA auditing din po sila. And uh, pangatlo po, meron po yung tinatawag po ang DILG na meron po sila mga awards dyan eh. Yung Seal of Excellence, Good Conduct, and ganyan-ganyan. So I think they have to they have to um, adhere to that para po. Kasi pag, I think may mga, may mga premyo yan eh. Pag meron ka mga awards na ganyan. So I think that's enough uh, motivation for them. Thank you very much. I think that uh, ends our uh, press conference today with no, Secretary Pang Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Malakanyan Press Corps. Have a good afternoon. Okay.